Hello and welcome to another Q and A. It is Friday, so we're answering lots of questions again this week. Now, an exciting week coming up next week. It is U.S. Open. Now, we also have one of our guys, Aaron Rye, who we coached for a number of years now, actually made it into the U.S. Open. So we're going to be flying out there Sunday and spending the whole week there watching Aaron, helping him out on the golf course. So if you are there, please come and show your support. Come and say hello and follow us around for a few holes. It'd be great to meet you. We thought we'd let you know that, just in case we haven't told you yet about the fact he's qualified. We may have told a few people. Here we go. He shot 14 under on one day, two rounds to actually yep. qualify, won the qualifier. So fair play to him. Looking forward to it. It's also a very exciting month on MeAndMyGolf.com. Lots of great content. It's all about hitting your irons better. So if you really want to improve your irons, ball striking, accuracy, um, even distance, go and check it out. Sign up for the 30-day free trial and loads of content is going to be going up over the next month too. Ooh, take Ooh. a deep breath. Okay, so guys, obviously, uh, US Open week, we normally give, uh, we normally do a giveaway. So US Open staff, tailor-made, limited edition bag will be going up next week as well as a giveaway. Actually, talking of giveaways, Sergio Garcia's shoe. The one that he won in the Masters. No, it wasn't. Two, two of them, actually. Not so, just the one. So it's actually his left <laughs> foot is signed. Two. His right foot isn't signed. But uh, we're going to be doing that giveaway pretty soon as well. Not confirmed on what day. So, Andy, as you said, lots of great questions, as always. I really like doing these Q&As because um, you know what we like. We talk forever. Too much. Too much. Hurry and up, then, it, um, it's nice to get lots of questions in. So... Starting with this one, so Dawkins, 12-6-8-8, is hitting his woods a lot better now, but his iron game has gone. He was hitting a 9-iron 150 yards, it's now going, sorry, it's now a 7-iron which is going 150 yards. So Andy, what sort of things are we looking at there? Well, well, look, losing lose, distance with your irons, losing a very distance good way to start. With your irons. Well look, the, I think one of the key things when people lose distance with their irons, it's not because they're losing any power or speed generally, it's because they're creating too much loft, this is one of the reasons, mm -hmm. too much loft at impact. So. As soon as we create too much loft, the ball is going to lose distance because it's just going to go, the launch angle is too high. So what we see in the golf swing is, this is the number one thing that, we, that really causes too much loft at impact. We see an over-rotation of the club face in the backswing, okay? And then what happens then, we have to sort of try and compensate them by releasing the club a little bit early. And as we release the club early in the downswing, this creates and gets this shaft leaning backwards and creates too much loft. So... What we would say and our advice would be is to really focus on keeping the golf club a little squarer in the backswing, find out and see what that club face is doing. If the club face can stay squarer, then it's so much easier then to actually lean that shaft forward and create that lower dynamic loft and you're going to see the difference in distance again. But it sounds like you're going to be more here. We yeah. need to get that shaft leaning forward. You can see there from the uh, alignment tool. So like Andy says, the, the the early releasing is done in an effort to try and square the club face back yeah. up. That's what you're. That's obviously the most important thing when you're hitting a, a nine iron or a seven iron. Good, isn't it? I like that. Yeah, yeah, I like that, don't you? Okay, okay, I'll go this one. So we've got Ethan four one five underscore golf. Um, tips for pitching from forty to ninety yards. So the biggest problem we see with pitching is people try to put their full golf swing in where they're trying to wind up their body and use that lower body to generate power which is great for hitting full shots, but when you come into the sort of the field shots or the shots where you're trying to control distance, not create distance, it can mess with your distance control and obviously the different flights that you hit it. So we like a, a couple of drills, sort of rock the baby or something like that, where you, you basically feel as though your arms are pinned into your body and your arms are moving now because you're moving your hips. So I'm moving my hips and my knees to move my upper body as well. So there's no power in that. It's a lot easier than to control distance. There we go. go. Okay, so Atle Homland, hope that's correct. Um, how long should the backswing be with the driver? Right, great question. Like now look, I think backswing length is really important um, because it is a lot harder if you start swinging long. It doesn't mean that you can't play good golf swinging the club long because a lot of good players do that. But what we'd say is that, look, shortening the golf swing down so your arms are more in sync with the torso is so so key because it really enables you to deliver a consistent power to the golf club as soon as we get let's say the arms and the club running past too far and the torso stops then everything's got to play catch up it's hard to sequence the downswing well and you're just going to lose power so what we'd say is really in a preferred situation not for everybody but in a preferred situation we'd like to see the golf club maybe slightly shorter parallel but the key thing is really making sure that the club head the hands and the torso really sort of reach the top of the backswing at the same point that's a good indication that they're in sync and then it's easier to start the downswing from there. Not not this short of parallel, by the way. That's no, not that short, short, no, not vertical. Okay, yeah, no, I think it's good. That's a great answer, great answer. Thank you. So Harvey underscore Barrow has said, what are our favourite clubs in the bag? So, uh, driver for me. I like just whacking it. <laughs> he does, he just likes whacking it. Just like now, whacking it. I've got my favourite club here, my 58 degree um, 
Love Wedge, just because I like to play a variety of different shots with this. Might be a low pitch, might be uh, a flop shot, and just the creativity that you need to do with this is a lot more fun. So 58 degree for me. I think Wedges, I the driver as well, wedges and fair. Driver are probably the most fun clubs. Yeah. One that whacks it and one that has that creativity. I so think so. I think we've, you've kind of got it both there. Okay, Matty, H97. How do you decide what grips to get? I need new grips on his irons. Does it go on feel or specific hand measurements? And what do you want from the grip? Um, look... Definitely look at specific hand measurements. So it goes along the lines of being fit, you know, but you've got to go with what feels comfortable as well. So what feels good when you're holding the golf club for the size? And then you've got to look at the texture. Do you go for the corded grips? Do you go for a more of a leather feel, a spongy feel? You've really got to work that out by yourself. It, it, there's no real right answer other than what you feel comfortable with. That's, Definitely. that's all that really matters. And you've got wraps on. Piers has got wraps on. Yep. I couldn't play with a wrap. It just doesn't feel comfortable where I've got the actual tour velvet so for me I prefer that sort of smoother softer grip so it is definitely personal preference yeah well, I, I generally don't have a problem with how a grip feels it's how it looks really for me a bit more yeah okay all right here we go so ktb1980 underscore uk putting tips please routines on the course that you can practice or at or, or at home um, playing around 90 to 95 but often having a lot of three puts 12 to 13 three puts I think a, a great drill, there's two things you need to look at when you're putting. Number one is, can you get the face angle pretty much pointing towards your target when you strike it? So a really good drill, we'll flick up an image on this here, is a, it's just putting a chalk line down on the putting green when you're practicing and just getting the golf ball to start on that chalk line. That's a really good drill. And the next thing, next component you need to do is you need to be very good at distance control. So if you can actually just practice hitting balls from anywhere from 20 to 40 feet and getting them just past the hole to two club lengths, sorry, to a club length past the hole. So imagine that you've got the hole and then a club length behind it, you can put another club down. You can get the ball anywhere in that area there. You become a very good um, aggressive lag putter. So you'll become someone then who can who can two putt a lot. And then if you're very good at starting the ball online, you won't miss those four and five footers if you've got exactly. those as well. So it's, you know, pace control and getting that face angle good when you're striking it. Right, Andy, da, 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 da. this is a good one, you can do this one. So, Lee Ray Meatman, how to recover from bad shots mid-round. So, i.e. bad driving, should you just put the club away and work on it when you finish your round, or should you try and fix it during the round? Uh, good. That's a really good question. question. So, let's say you've had a round and you're really struggling with the driver, and then you start almost trying to fix what's going on. It becomes very difficult then, because then you're thinking about technique on the golf course and trying to correct certain shots, uh, you've got two options really you either go for you either just stick with your approach and stick with your routine and and don't change anything hope that's going to get better okay you all uh, actually i'm going to go with three options so you can either do that you can allow for the bad shot that you're hitting if it, let's say if it's a slice then you can say well look i'm going to play with that today because that's what's naturally coming out so i'm going to aim down the left hand side and allow for that that slice or fade um, or you can switch club and you can say, right, the driver's just not working today. I'm not going to mess around with it. I'm going to go to a, we've all got that club in the bag that we, that safety club that we like. It might be a hybrid, it might be a three or a five wood and then go to that. So get it in play. Don't battle with yourself. Don't battle with your golf swing on the golf course because then your score is going to suffer. You know, you've got to do, do the best you can to get it around the, the golf course in as low number as possible. It's all about the numbers when you get out yeah. there. The only thing I would add to that is if you know how to, f if, you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you have a consistent bad shot, go and figure out how to do it to fix it, so to say, and then when you're actually out on the golf course and that bad shot does come in, then you've got, at least got something to combat yeah. against it. But yeah, yeah, but yeah, good, good answer, Andy. Right, Tom Dot Chapman, any tips on how to keep your head down? So we get asked this a lot, and we're going to keep answering this until in every video, I think, until people realise you don't keep your head down. We don't want you to keep your head down unless you're putting. So I mean, I'd well, actually. To there's a, there, yeah, so the, the key thing with this, because we've done this so many it's times, haven't we, it's, it's, it's what you're thinking, really. Exactly. Actually, so when we, when we talk about you know, not keeping the head down, people say, well, look, when you look at these top pros, they've all got their head down at the golf ball when, when they're striking it. Yes, they have, but they are not thinking and focusing on keeping this still. The problem is, is not what, the, what actually happens. It's the thought which influences then something else. So if you're thinking about keeping the head down or keeping it still, the knock-on effect of that is it switches off the body, the lower body and the upper body from rotation from lateral movement, robs you of power. So look, I haven't seen anybody hit a poor goal shot because they looked up too early. Never. I've never seen that happen. And, and I think the key thing, if you, if you think you're looking up too early, video yourself hitting some shots and you'll see that you are not looking up too early. Um, 
So yeah, I mean, we get it all the time. So don't worry about what your, what your head is doing. Allow it to move with the golf ball. If you're hitting it bad, it'll be a different reason. Okay. So I'm sure we'll get that again and we'll, we'll answer it exactly the same in the next Q&A. So yes. that's that comes yes. up. Absolutely. We'll try and find a different way of answering it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mark Bursich has a uh, good question. How good do you need to be to use stiff shafts? It doesn't really matter how good you are. It's how strong you are, really. So it's how powerful you are as a golfer. Shafts, more and more we're looking at it, are very important for the feel um, when you're hitting golf shots. They obviously can, the, the different flex, you can have a regular or all the way up to an, a double extra stiff. You know, you've got to look at what you feel comfortable with. So I like to have a heavy golf shaft and prefers a lighter one with a little bit more flex in it. And there's no difference in our swing speeds. Our swing speeds are virtually the same, slightly more. But what happens is that, you know, it's how you feel that shaft when you when you're when you're hitting shots i mean that, that that's what it comes down to really again get a fitting yeah and then with the, when we got fitted for ours with tom davis uh, one of the questions that he was asking for us well how do you like to feel the shaft do you like to feel that it loads do you and these are all the things that when you go for a fitting he will ask you personal to you and that's that's the that's the great thing about it it's fitted to you and what you like so um yeah i think that's the key thing okay all right andy here we go can you go over the characteristics sorry this is kurt rob 316 can you go over the characteristics of a bounce of a wedge and when is a higher bounce versus a lower bounce optimal? So basically, what's the bounce and... Okay, so the bounce reason? angle. For you guys who don't know what the bounce angle is, it is the angle between the leading edge and the back edge of the sole. Okay, and what it does really, the bounce is a great thing um, because it helps you use the sole uh, when you're interacting with the ground. So for instance, you can have a high bounce wedge, or a standard or a low bounce wedge, depending on your technique. So if you're somebody who's fairly shallow, then a low bounce option is pretty good. Now, if you're somebody who's very steep, okay, comes steep into the golf ball, you don't really want the leading edge to be digging in too much, so the bounce angle can help the club interact a little bit better and sort of bounce it off the ground a little more. But also the course conditions that you play on as well. If you've got firm, tight fairways, you don't really want a high bounce club because then it brings the leading edge a little too high off the ground and makes it very difficult to get that nice strike. So if you're on a, uh, a links course with really tight fairways, then you may want to go for a lower bounce option. So there's things you need to, to look into that really in terms of your your course conditions that you play at. Um, again, if you're going to use it for pitching or bunkers, how do you like to use this? Do you like to open the face up? Mm -hmm. um, a number of things, and this is why wedge fitting now is is more and more important because it's tailoring it. Again, you know these these wedges are so important clubs in your bag. Getting these right are key. So getting the right loft, getting the right bounce angles for you. Definitely worth looking at. Go and have a fitting. Are you, are you selling fittings today? I'm selling fittings today. <laughs> but our job really is just to advise on the sort of things that you need to look for when you do go for that fitting as well. All right, let's go for another one here. We've got Reading 77. So when hitting irons, especially short irons and wedges, where on the ball should I be focusing? Andy, I love it in the office, but you think we should go on the golf course for this one? Yes, let's get on the golf course let's and talk about this. Course. So we have the perfect place here, 18th at the Asprey. Now let's go through the question again, Pierce. When hitting irons, especially short irons and wedges, where on the golf ball should I be focusing? Okay, there are two trains of thought that you can use here. So Andy's going to give you one, I'm going to give you one as well, but we've definitely been able to change people's ball flight by where they look relative to the golf ball. So think of this, if I were to focus on the inside of the golf ball, that could give, my, give me a chance of having a club path which is more going out to the right when I'm striking it, playing a draw. If I want to play a fade, I can look on the outside of the golf ball that's the one way of looking at it. When it comes to short iron specifically, if you want to improve that ball striking, we could get you looking at the front of the golf ball. So target side of the golf ball. So that is going to actually get your low point a little bit later and get you focusing on rotating through the shot. So you can look in different places to change the direction of the club, to change the low point and the strike of the ball. Definitely. Now, Another interesting thing when we, when we talk about focus in terms of where you're looking as well, and I asked Pierce off camera, I said, where do you look at the golf ball? And he said, I don't actually know. And I think this happens with a lot of the best players in the world. Please, a lot of the best players see that. And um, look, I think there's, there's two types of really focus, Pierce, isn't there? You can have your uh, foveal vision or you yes. can have your, your peripheral. Now, the yes. foveal is where you're really focused on a, a certain spot, a point. Now, what a lot of the better players do they're in peripheral vision, Pierce, aren't they? So they're aware that the ball's there. Ben Hogan, yeah. Ben Hogan, yeah. So Great they're example. aware that the ball's there, but they're not focused on a specific mm -hmm. point. And I remember Sebi saying when it comes to short game, stare at the target and glance at the golf ball. So it was it was more of a sort of an awareness. Now, a great tool to, to, te uh, to test this or yep. even practice this is place a tee peg either side 
of the golf ball, maybe even actually a little further away, Pierce. I'm mm -hmm. going to test okay. it out a little bit longer. Okay. Each side here. Now, what we're going to get Pierce to do, this is what you should do at home, is take a look at the golf ball. Yep. We want you to be looking at the golf ball, be aware of the tee pegs. So being aware of the tee pegs will put you in that peripheral vision. And it takes a lot of the strain out, the tension out, and you're not focused so much on a specific yep. point as well. Yeah. And, I, and look, these can work either way. You've got to obviously figure out what you want to do. So you can try and change the nature of the technique, or when you're on the golf course, maybe you shouldn't be doing that and, and doing this, because this is actually a lot more like what I would be doing. So this looks more familiar to me. So and do you know what, the perfect combination, you can combine the two. Yeah, oh, there we go, absolutely. Okay, all right, so from here, let's pull the trigger. This is a long way away on the 18. Beautiful. Wind will just bring that in nicely. Very nice. Give me another one, Andy. I reckon I can hit that green again. That's actually gone too far. <laughs> So next question is from Mizan14. I'm trying to get a better takeaway. Any drills to help? I'm trying to shorten my swing. Any drills do you have for me, please? Okay, so better takeaway and shortening the golf swing. Luckily, I've got a head cover here, just so happens. Um, often when we see poor takeaways and long back swings, just hold that a second, Andy, we see arms disconnecting from the body. So whether it be sort of this move here and then this move here, left arm coming away from the body. So what we're going to do, is we're going to pin it to the body. So head cover in place, tuck it in like so. And from here now, you can just do some rehearsals where you are keeping the head cover in. So look straight away, I've got a really controlled, uh, connected move away. And then from there, very difficult for me to go into my, into an overswing. So from here, getting that feeling of good move away and then into the full swing. Now, we've seen lots of people do this drill before. I really like people doing this as a practice swing, but then taking it away when they play the shot. So yes, of course you can hit shots doing this. I just feel that sometimes it gets a little bit too restrictive. So if you can actually say, well, I'm gonna actually go, right, practice, 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 and then take it away and pull the trigger. I think that works a lot better for people. Just giving them that feel, I can still feel as though I've got the, the cover in there, but it's a little less restrictive when it comes to hitting the golf ball. And a pretty short, controlled swing there. Great one to get the connection and definitely going to help shorten that golf swing. Okay. Okay, Andy, over to you. So we have Engelen8 has asked how to prevent the right hip to move up in the backswing. I tend to straighten my right leg and he's looking forward to seeing the drill. So right hip high. Okay, Just right so hip happened, high. Just so happy you an stick in an there. Alignment stick, great uh, tools these are. Great feedback tools. Right, okay, I've got one through my hips here. So what he's saying, Pierce, he's saying in the backswing, He's straightening the right leg yeah. and the right hip gets extremely high. From here, very hard to get a good downswing sequence from here, often over the top, often that club crashing into the ground with a path left. Yes. So this is what you want to do. Alignment stick through the belt loops, use a mirror for this or even record yourself on video. And you're going to start with your setup and you're going to feel as if you can drop that trail hip slightly lower. So you'll see there the right hip's lower than the left. Now in the backswing, you want to really feel as if you can keep this lower. And I say feel because it will go higher. So as we swing back here, I'm going to feel that that stays lower. In reality, it will move higher. But you can see a big difference between this one, Pierce, and that one where, we, where he totally. probably is. Yeah, so, totally. So it's a great feeling for you, and you're going to start to feel that you're loading into this trail leg. A lot of the power is going to be built up in that, in that leg there to push from on the way back. Okay, so we can hit golf shots with the alignment stick in there, but we just need to move it a little bit, obviously, because you don't want to hit push it Push it over way that way. So again, I'm really going to feel this now. He's really high this side. So normal setup here, really dropping that right hip a little higher there, sorry, a little lower, and from here just load up onto that trail side. Very nice. Good shot. Right, Andy, so next question. I've got a feeling you may want to leave that in there, so I'm going to give you a tea because you're going to need one. So Doug's Empire said, how to post up on the left side, so lead side, and stop sliding my hips. Um, this is the last key to his golf swing. Everything right. else feels great. Everything else is good, right. So okay. We've got to sort him out here, come on. We've, we've got, got to sort Doug so out. Again, we're going to leave it this side now. So what he's saying is on the way down, he's sliding, lower body's moving too much laterally, the knee is crashing through this sort of line that we see here. And again, very hard to rotate the pelvis from there and actually get a good delivery from, the, from where the golf club's coming from. So what we're going to get you to do is, from here, we're going to make a back swing. Now, as opposed to moving laterally so much, we're going to really focus on getting the alignment stick to actually move and rotate this way. Okay, so you can see straight away the difference there. 
I'm rotating the pelvis. Okay, this is gonna clear, hopefully, these yep. hips. As I then swing through, we're gonna start to see how this will straighten up a lot better. And we're gonna see that hardly any there lateral. Do you know what? If you're somebody who slides lots and you feel as if you're having zero movement towards the target, there's a good chance you'll probably meet in the middle and still get a little bit of this lateral movement, yeah. which we still want. So hit a shot there, Andy. So that's exactly right. As Andy says there, there is no way that you'll be able to do it exactly as Andy was demonstrating in those practice swings. So I'm just gonna get a rehearsal there. This is a strange one for me to do because I get plenty of lateral movement, but I'm really gonna focus on that alignment stick moving back and left when I do this. Nice. And that one could be in pace. I think you should do that draw more often. And actually, watching. I'm watching. Oh, yeah, actually, that would have been your first one. And actually, this is something that you do need to do. It is. Okay, guys, hope you enjoyed that. So we hope you enjoyed that, guys. Lots of great questions coming in again. If you want your question answered, make sure you leave a comment down below and we'll choose as many as we can for next week. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button down there. And don't forget to come and see us at the US Open next week if you're around. It'd be great to say hello. And also, if you are serious about your golf this year, don't forget to go to the website, meandmygolf.com, 30-day free trial, see all the great content we've got up there, and also a chance to win those tailor-made M irons. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week at the US Open.